What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? What's up? So, girl, listen, it's time for Real Talk, Real Talk Diva, Real Talk Wednesday, whatever day you're watching this, girl, okay? So, why I just get on my other phone, you know, why do I see, as soon as I get on here, R. Kelly suing the United States overseas commissary funds, okay? So, did they take his jail money? Like, I'm just I'm just trying to figure this out. Did, did, did the United States take R. Kelly's commissary? It says, R. Kelly has sued to get his commissary funds back after they were allegedly taken by the United States government to satisfy a judgment against him. According to court documents obtained by Hip Hop DX, a hearing on the matter is scheduled for Monday, which is today, March 18th, with Assistant United States Attorney Kayla Bensing representing the United States. The oral arguments will be live streamed and a link to the live stream can be found here. Now, you know what? Listen, I'm not even about to click this live stream because I don't know who's right, who's wrong in this matter. Like, those are his commissary funds. And, you know, I'm not really sure what's going on with R. Kelly. I just know this. I just mind my business. Most of the time, I mind my business. I learn to mind my business. I try to stay out of shit. I don't want to be put in the middle of shit. I don't want to be part of shit that I ain't got no business in. So, and I damn sure don't keep up on celebrity news, like celebrity gossip. I don't really care. Like, if Beyonce is is giving out turkeys, I wouldn't care because she's not doing anything for me. If Beyonce was having another baby, girl, I wouldn't care. Look, let me tell y'all. I didn't know Janet Jackson had a baby or was pregnant until like months after she had the baby. That's how much I don't really care about celebrities and what they do with their lives. Like, it's not my business. That's just not my business. You know, you do what you want to do. I do what I want to do over here. Girl, look, I don't really care. But um, if that's the case, then too bad for R. Kelly. Um, you need your commissary when you're in jail. Yeah, you need to get snackies and stuff like that. But anyway, I hope y'all have like a really great day, girl. Yes, it's Wednesday. It's real talk. Well, it's actually really Monday. You know what I'm saying? So you know how to do these a little bit earlier. You know, it's Monday. I threw, I threw on this little headband wig for my first wig. A little yaki straight that I had that I forgot I had. You know, I try to come through and look presentable for y'all. Today is Monday. Y'all know if y'all don't know me very well, y'all will know me now. Now, on Mondays, every Monday at Savers Thrift Store, everything is 50% off. So I'll be there opening, you know, at 9 o'clock when they open. I'm there. Mm -hmm. I like to get clothes for my grandkids, like my granddaughter and my new grandchild that's going to be here in June. Only because those are the clothes that look in mint condition at the thrift store. And babies outgrow things so quick. So it's like I get little essentials, like maybe some onesies, little things like that. Girl, look, I found so many nice outfits for my granddaughter with tags on them, Okay over the past couple of years that I've been going to the thrift store. Well, I've been going to the thrift store for more than the past couple of years, but since she's been born. So I'm making my business not to go every Monday because I used to, but when I get a chance. And I used to go every Monday and girl, I was coming out with nice shit for her polo, Ralph Lauren, Gymboree. Y'all remember the store brand, Gymboree, with tags on them, Gap, um, Children's Place, all kind of stuff that I be getting. A lot of stuff from Target. Jack in the Box, what is it called? TikTok? I mean, not TikTok, girl. I don't know, Jumping Jack, whatever. Y'all, Cat Jack, Jack and Cat, or Cat and Jack, something like that. You know what I'm saying? So I be finding like a lot of nice stuff for the baby, always. And it be like perfect condition. Sometimes you be like, is this brand new? Some of the stuff be brand new, brand new. And I be getting it for like a dollar, two dollars. So, you know. Build up a little wardrobe. She be having clothes at, up until the age of four, a size 14. You know, that's how I do. I get sizes for the next year. But anyway, that's what I was doing today. And then I had to go on down to the car insurance place because they were messing up my damn account. You messing with my money. Don't be messing with my goddamn money. So what I do over the weekend, girl, let me tell y'all. I was going to do some videos over the weekend, like two week videos, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to do them throughout the week because I just really wanted to chill on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, I helped Nay. Well, I, I didn't really help Nay. She took over and she built the vanity that I received from this company that we put. I got it for Tati. Um, it was sent to me, but I got it for Tati and Nay put it together. I made a sandwich for Nay because she told me she got this. You know, that's the one thing about being a proud single mother. OK, I have raised my daughters to be very self-sufficient. They could do shit on their own. They could build stuff on their own. And I love that. You know, next, I'm going to teach her how to. Well, I think I, I thought I think I did teach her how to uh, change a tire. I know I taught Tati how to change a tire, but you know what I'm saying? Like, we can't always depend on a man around, even if you're a wife or are you engaged or whatever. Sometimes they don't be around. So you got you to gotta dig in and you got to dive in. You got to do shit on your own. So you don't have to wait around for nobody to do it for you. You know, so she built the vanity, nice vanity. We'll have a vlog coming up of that soon. And that was this Sunday. I was very tired. I woke up very tired. My legs, I was very, very tired. My legs were so sore and I was just very tired. So I really did sit around and I was watching a series on um, Apple TV called Invasion. Now, if y'all know me real well, y'all know I love sci-fi. I love sci-fi, science fiction shows. I love stuff like that. So Invasion is about aliens. Apple TV do have some really nice 
uh, shows on there, you know? Because yesterday I did watch the Baddies Caribbean audition number three on um, part three on Zeus. Yes, because the girl got Zeus Network. I paid for Zeus for the whole year. I love Zeus. Okay, I like Ratchet TV sometimes. But yeah, so I was watching that. Who who on here watch Zeus? Who on here be watching the Baddies and Jocelyn's? But really the Baddies. Like, I love the Baddies. Who on here watch the Baddies? If you watch Baddies on here, you on here, you watch the Baddies. Put Baddies in the comments, okay? Put Baddies in the comments because I love Ratchet TV. Who don't love drama? As long as that shit ain't about me and I ain't got drama going on about me, then girl, I'm good. I love Ratchet TV, okay? Because it's entertainment. Like, it's, it's seriously Okay, so y'all already know what to do when it's Wednesday. If you got a real talk you want me to talk about, you know, go ahead and send me an email to my is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com or you can also use my real talk one which is april's real talk at gmail.com please put in the subject line for either one real talk so that way i know it's a real talk email also you if you want me to not disclose your name or change your names please mention that in the bot in the email or the, the story or whatever you want to tell but you know this is real talk it's my opinions i'm not giving you no advice i'm telling you what i would do i mean you could take it as a grain of salt you could take it what you want but this is real talk so let's just get into it So this one, girl, is entitled At the Top, Roommate from Hell, okay? Hi, April and Divas and Devos. How is everyone today? Thank you in advance, Miss April. So glad to see Real Talk is back in effect. So here goes. I have watched you since my teen years, and I am now 30, so that is like forever. And I thank you for all you do. I have a huge question. How do you get rid of a roommate from hell? Girl, I don't know, because I never had a roommate. This girl, or rather woman that I am roommates with, I also work with her in the hospital. Both of us are nurses. We became close at work around three years ago because she had a bad living situation with an ex of hers. I didn't know the ex was a female until recently, and I never really asked because I assumed it was a man. But neither here nor there, the less, I'm not judging due to the sexual preference. So she and I, you can call her Mary, and me, I'm sorry, Miss April, my name is Denisha. I have no kids, never been married, and live on my own, or rather with a roommate now. So Mary and I became close at work three years ago due to bad living situations from her ex, whom she said was verbally abusing her and also not clean at all. I just moved into a townhouse with three bedrooms. So I told her about it and I told her we could split everything 50-50 if she wanted to move in with me. It was close by the job and it would be nice to have company around. Mary moved in about a month after I spoke to her about it and we became roommates. Mary is good with paying the bills on time. She likes to make sure everything is paid on time and is always ready. I have no issues about any bills being paid. But it's her cleansiness that has really been pissing me off for like the last year and a half. This woman, whom is also in her 30s, will leave nasty pads and tampons in the trash without throwing the bags away. She will flood the garbage can with them. She constantly has dirty clothes all around the townhouse, which I find myself picking up and putting in her nasty ass room. There are mountains of dishes in her bedroom along with garbage. She smokes in her room, meaning cigarettes, which are smelling up the house. Like we have a balcony, go outside and smoke. She has filthy habits and constantly has random chicks over to fuck. And waking up to see these random females walking through our place, not dressed in nothing but panties, no shirt has really gotten to me. I have said something to her about giving our address out. And she says, well, if you would give me a chance, then I wouldn't have anyone over, but you're not trying to get with it. April, if I did swing that way, she sure wouldn't be my pick of a female lover. How many times do you tell a person, a grown person, to clean up after themselves? I am so over her and her dirty mess. I'm over the random hoes coming over to sex. feel like my only sanctuary is at work or visiting with my mother, whom I visit regularly and sometimes spend the night just to get away. 
Mary was a great co-worker, but the smell coming from her and her room is ridiculous. Not only is she messy, but I swear I'm not stalking her, but her hygiene is not up to my standards because she doesn't bathe daily and then sits her funky ass on my furniture. I'm still confused as to how she's getting all these women with her hygiene being the way it is. Miss April, I'm over her and I really feel like packing up and moving. Since we both are on the lease, I feel like breaking my end of the lease, paying the extra money just to move out. What would you do in this situation? Someone please, please, please help me. Okay, so first of all, it's the part that when Denisha was like, if I did swing that way, what'd she say? It's the way she worded it. If I did swing that way, she sure wouldn't be my pick of a female lover. It's the way she worded it. It just was like, of a female lover. Like, listen, I guess, what did she say to call her? Mary? Mary is, I guess, really smelly, really stanky. Mary got some issues with hygiene and being clean. She's smoking in a room, smoking cigarettes. Hey, how's it going? You look cute. Yeah. <laughs> so Mary's smoking in the lip in the bedroom. She's got a balcony. She doesn't want to smoke in on the balcony. She's smelling up the house with her cigarette stench. She's got all type of hoes, because that's what she said. Hoes, randoms coming over, walking through the place with nothing but panties on, okay? And um, she's tired of seeing that. But also, Mary said if she would give her a chance, then she wouldn't have to see all of that. First of all, y'all are roommates. Don't nobody want to give nobody a chance if y'all are roommates. We didn't come in here to be lovers. We came in here to be roommates. And now you got smelly buns sitting her funky ass on my furniture. You know what's crazy? This is the crazy part. Um, You ever been into, like, a thrift store and the furniture? You ever smelled the furniture? Or just in general, like... I think it's the furniture or maybe it's the store, but I feel like it's just the furniture. I would smell not like I wouldn't go and smell it, but you can smell it as you're near it. It just smells like old people ass. I don't know how, but I wouldn't say it like that. I would just say it just smells like old people booty. I wouldn't really know how to describe the stench, but I could understand what she's saying. Cause don't put your funky ass on my furniture. She wants, she gonna ask me, what would I do in this situation? Well, first of all, I ain't never had no roommate. Okay. No, I'm lying. I guess I would consider that a roommate. Cause my cousin and I, I had one child at the time. She had one child at the time. She, um, we were roommates, I guess. Yeah. Even though we're family, we're roommates. Um, that did, that shit didn't last long. She asked me to come live with her. So I decided to move in with my cousin and, um, she and I, we are the exact same age. She's just a couple, she's just like a couple weeks older. We're both Gemini's. Now this is my cousin, Kenya. This is my cousin, Nakia. Now my cousin, Nakia and I, we weren't as close as cousins as me and Kenya, but we would, we would chill. But um, when I moved in with her, girl, it was just like a total, total change. She's not only messy, but uh, she wasn't that messy, but she was she was a 304. That's what they call them, 304s. Yeah, she would leave her daughter with me because her daughter was like two years younger than my son. So she would just leave her because I was there, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't going anywhere. So, I mean, I guess it's okay. But she would leave her with me or she would go out with her friends and they would come back drunk. They would jump out on cabs, you know what I'm saying? And run into the building. Um, we ended up having a fight a physical fight, she and I, because my mom had loaned me a, a window fan. And I told Nakia, I'll take it out the window. I guess because Nakia's friend was over, she felt like it was time for her to just show off or whatever. So she and I got like a dispute. She took my mama's fan and threw it on the floor. Girl, you don't never throw my mama shit around. You don't throw my mama shit around. So we had a physical, physical fight. Like, you know what I'm saying? When she threw my mama's fan on the floor, April went swinging. And that's that's how it was. And then I left. I moved out after that. So I, I really don't do the roommate thing. I just, I don't, I just can't do the roommate thing because I like living with just my kids or by myself. I'm not about to have no other grown person living with me. And then their bad habits become irritating to me. And one thing I don't like is my piles of dishes in a room. I don't like clothes all over the floor. I don't like clothes all over the house. I don't like a messy house at all. And that's just me. I might sometimes have a little mess and it, it might not even be considered a mess to anyone else, but to me, it might be considered a mess. I'm very organized. My clothes are color coordinated. Okay. I know where everything is at, where I push it. So I don't really need anybody else to come in my home and disrupt it. But if that was me, what would I do? Girl, listen, I would put your ass the fuck out. There's no way I'm leaving, okay? I found this place. I've been living here before. You were, I'm not, no, no. I'm going to have you put the fuck out, okay? She said that she was going to pack her shit and move. I mean, 
if it's easy to do, if that's what you want to do, you want to pack your stuff up and pay extra, then by all means do that. Because sometimes it can be pretty hard to evict someone. And I guess it's best that you leave on your own. But here's the thing when you're choosing a roommate. Just because y'all friends at work don't mean y'all got to live together. Like, y'all are work friends. Y'all wasn't friends outside of that. You said we became close at work. So you really didn't know Mary. You didn't know her habits. You didn't know what she was up to. You didn't know what she was doing. Shit, you didn't even know she was a lesbian, okay? And you asked me what I would do. I wouldn't roommate with anybody that I worked with because we co-workers. We're not friends. See, this is the thing that people get fucked up. When you go to get a job, you go to get a job. You go to get a check. That's why you're there. You're not there to make friends. You're there to make money. You make your money. You making moolah. You making cash. You get into the bag. That's what you're there for at work. You're not there to make friends. And you're damn sure ain't there to make roommates. Now, yeah, you might see her at work, but see, this is her work personality. People have different personalities. When you go to work, you one person. When you get home, you another person. When you go out with your friends, you a totally different person. You got different personalities to different ways of you as a person. So you cannot just say, oh, well, she's so nice at work. That's her work personality. Why would you go to work being ratchet, stupid, disrespectful? Because you lose your goddamn job. That's just point blank, period, okay? When you're at home with your family, yeah, you might act a little goofy and silly. And then when you're out with your girlfriends, you might, you know, twerking on the wall, twerking on the man. I don't know. You might little be a little bit ratchet. You got, you know, you got different sides to you. It's like a split personality. You are that person. You have a work person. Just like they say, I got a work husband, a work girlfriend, a work wife, whatever. You got work friends. They, they nothing but friends while you're at work or co-workers. You're here to work, not make friends. And that was your number one problem, your number one mistake, is that you brought somebody from work to live with you. This, this is crazy because it's funny because they got shows for this. They got the ID channel, Fear Thy Neighborhood, Fear, Fear Thy Neighbor, Fear Thy Roommate. They got that one too. It was only one season with eight episodes. Ask me how I know because I'm always watching ID channel. But they have shows about this. And you have to be real, real picky and choosy of who you have come live with you. Some people will put an ad in the newspaper online saying they are in need of looking for a roommate. I think that's the worst thing you could ever do. Then there are those who, like yourself, um, Donisha, who choose to work, work co-workers to become roommates. Sometimes that could be a disaster. Then you have those who were best friends from the very beginning. And those seem like they work out the best, in my opinion. But bringing somebody from work into your home is not like something that I would do. Because for one, like I said, they got different personalities. They got their work personality. They got their home personality. They got their going out personality. That person is a different person each time. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. And I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm just being truthful. That's what it is. Because when I would go to work for Fidelis, I would be Sarah. Okay, yes, my family, my ex-husband and my kids, they would call me Sarah. Not Becky, but Sarah, because I like to be called Sarah. And then when I get home, I'm regular April, okay? And then when I go out, I'm still regular April, funny, silly, goofy. So I have different personalities, okay? Work personality, home personality. When Fidelis fired me, you know, they brought me into their office. They was ready to fire me after the 12 years. And I already knew they was firing me. And, you know, they was beating around the bush, saying different things. And I had to let them know, look, just get to it already because I have things to do and I don't have time for this. They was like, we, we didn't never see the side of April. Yeah, you didn't never see the side of April because this is the real April. This is the Sarah. That was Sarah. This is April. So, see, they was even confused when I, I brought my other personality into it. It wasn't my personality, but it was just who I really am. You know what I'm saying? I go to work being one person. I go home being myself. That's what I'm saying. They got different personalities. You can't invite everybody into your home. You can't invite everybody to live with you. I said this, like, was it last week? It's like fight, inviting the vampire. Once you invite them in, girl, they ain't never fucking leave it. Never. And then you invite somebody who you think is cool because of what she tells you while y'all are at work. Girl, I can tell you that I got a million dollars in the bank. If you want to believe that, then believe that shit. You don't know a person. You really don't know them. You got to watch them outside of work. You got to watch them in their own surroundings, in their own habitat. You can't watch them at work. Shit, they on their best behavior. Some people be on their best behavior while they at work. Let's just be for real. Because they at work. They ain't trying to lose their drive. They ain't trying to lose their money. They at work. It's called work. It's called an employer. We here to work, not to goof off and do dumb shit. So me personally, what would I do in this situation? Well, I wouldn't invite nobody to my home from work. That's one thing I would have not fucking done. And for two, I don't know about being clean, but the first time I see your clothes on the floor, I'm about to say something to you because ain't nobody no maid around here. Ain't nobody no maid. Ain't no merry maid service around here. We not picking up after no fucking body. Ain't nobody got no kids up in here. Okay. So therefore, if you would have been dropping your clothes on the goddamn floor, then there would have been a problem from the jump because I would have let you know straight forth right there that we got a problem. You waited for a year and a half, Donisha, to say something. You said you have been over this woman for the past year and a half for her dirtiness, cleansing. And 
it's a problem with a lot of people. Some of y'all just don't want to say what's on your mind. And trust me when I tell you, I have been that person myself. I be trying to spare people's feelings. I be trying to give people grace. And sometimes you just got to be straight forth with somebody. You got to be straight up with the person because if you don't, they're going to keep lingering on these bad habits, lingering on these annoying habits to you. And it's not going to get any better. And then what's going to happen at the end of the day or later on down the road, you're going to fucking explode. Okay. And that's what happens. Same shit with me. I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm the best at telling people about themselves because I really do try to spare people's feelings and I allow people to just do things to me until I get to a certain point where it's like, you know what? Enough is enough. But one thing I do not play with is being clean, clean because I hate bugs and I don't want no roaches or no rats or no rodents in my goddamn house. So that's one thing that I'm very particular about. And you let this shit drag on. You got two grown women living in a dwelling together. And you mean to tell me that you cannot say anything? Fuck that she pays the bills on time. That's great, as she should. But she should also be very responsible and picking up after herself and stop having random 304 holes come over and walk around your place with nothing but panties on. I'd be damned if I woke up and saw a pair of titties walking through my goddamn kitchen and they was not mine. I would have a goddamn fit, okay? Like, what makes these other girls that she's inviting over feel like it's okay to walk through your house with nothing but panties on? Like, she's not laying down the rules. She's not setting no type of good vibe for anybody. She's just like, let it be, let it be, let it do what it do. Okay, let me tell you something. That's where you went wrong at. Because I'd be damned if I see some naked chick walking through my house with none of their panties on, I would stop her right there. Excuse me, but who the f are you? And where is your goddamn clothes? That would be my number one thing to say. Okay, I'm about to be fifty. I'm not biting my tongue for anybody. I'm not gonna hold back what I have to say. I can say it to you in a classy manner. I can say it to you, hopefully without hurting your feelings, as long as you don't run and start yapping off. I can say it to you as an adult. But what I'm not going to do is sit back and allow a bunch of hoes walking through my goddamn living room or kitchen or bathroom, walking around butt ass naked. And I don't even know who they are. When Mary said to Denisha, well, you ain't trying to get with it. You ain't trying to get with me. Sweetheart, we roommates. And like she said, if she did swing that way, she would not choose Mary as her female lover. She did say she wasn't stalking her and her hygiene ain't up to date or up to her standards. Excuse me. Up to date. Her hygiene wasn't up to her standards and she wasn't stalking her, but she doesn't bathe on a daily. Now, I don't know if their work schedule is exactly the same, meaning they work the same exact hours for her to know if this lady takes a bath or shower. I don't know this. I didn't I didn't ask and she didn't tell. OK, she didn't tell and I didn't ask. OK, she just said that they work together at the hospital. So I'm pretty sure that they did at a time or still do have the same work schedule schedule because she did say they became close. So how else would they have become close? It ain't like, oh, I see her there and hit her there and then you invite her in. So I'm pretty sure they work the same work schedule. Now, I guess also from appearance, she can tell if the girl's not clean just from or doesn't bathe. I mean, I don't really know. How can you tell if somebody... Well, I guess you can tell somebody doesn't bathe because they ass. She said her ass was funky. She sits her funky ass on my furniture. It's one thing to be messy, but it's one thing to be funky. Now, everybody have a little clutter here and there, okay? Who don't have a little clutter here and there? I don't know about mountains of dishes in your room because that's just nasty. That's just going to do nothing but attract flies and all type of bugs and mats. And that's just nasty too. Maggots. Um, But... um. I guess you can tell people that are clean and cleansy from just the way they live also. You, you definitely can. You definitely can. What would I do in this situation? Well, girl, listen, if it were me, I wouldn't have allowed it to go this far. Um, yeah, you, you allowed it to go way too far, dear. Like way too far. You said a year and a half. So how long have you guys been living with one another? Because you've been putting up with this for a year and a half. If you've done put up with somebody being dirty for a year and a half, you got hell of a patience. And I wish I could say the same about myself, but there's no way I'm sitting around and I'm giving anybody grace for one point six months of the of a year and a half. No, just not going to happen. 18 months, not happening. There's no way you're getting 18 months out of me of being filthy and dirty. So that's one thing that I would not have done. For one, you're going to your mother's house, leaving your own residence to feel comfortable. That's where you fucked up at. But what you really fucked up at is inviting some strange person because she was strange to you. Not going to say she wasn't because you are her co-worker. Y'all got close at work. Did y'all hang out after that? You didn't say. I don't know. Girl, listen. Denisha, listen. Denisha, what you're going to need to do in this case is you're going to need to put your big girl panties on. You're going to need to stand firm on what you're saying. And you're going to need to let Mary know you're either going to clean up this shit or you're going to get the F out. Period. I'm not about to dwell around. I'm not going to ninny around. I'm not going to beat around the bush trying to figure out how do I get someone to pick up after themselves or clean up after themselves or stop having hoes over or any of that. No, get to the point. We are grown. We are 30 years old. We are grown. And here is the thing. If you tell Mary about her hygiene, 
her cleansiness, the people coming over, she should understand where you're coming from. And then you can also let her know in those same paragraphs that you've explained to her why you need her to do these things because you are women, you are clean. Girl, hold up. But once I said woman, I realized and remember, one thing it is to be nasty as women, but two things it is. You are not about to leave your nasty ass sanitary pads and tampons in the fucking garbage, flooding the goddamn garbage. There's no way that shit stinks. Now I haven't had a period in like, what, five, six years now? But when I used to, I would be damned if I would let that shit flood in my bathroom and just keep piling it. I just find that to be just so nasty, okay? When you when they, when I did have pads, yeah, they do come with the little plastic that you could wrap them back in. But girl, I would take the grocery bags and I would put each I would put one inside that and knot it up and put it in the garbage because I don't that little plastic that the pad come in is not enough for me, okay? I'm gonna need it to go in this grocery bag. I need to knot that shit up. That's just disgusting. That's just disgusting. That I that right there is just disgusting to see a garbage full of pads and tampons. Girl, you should have been done. You should have been fucking done. That shit fucking stinks. I'm so glad that I don't have to go through that. I'm glad that my daughters aren't like that. I'm glad we have our own fucking bathrooms. Just nasty. Just nasty. But what you really need to do now, hun, is put your foot down. Put your big girl panties on. Let her know that this is not a dorm. This is a home. We live here. We are grown women. Please stop having your random women coming over here, walking around our home, but ass naked. Please stop throwing your clothes on the floor all around the place in our home because it is not grown up like. You need to sometimes include the word our to people so that they really get the point because if you say my, they're going to feel like, oh, well, I'm not really welcome here. Oh, I'm not really welcome here. Oh, I'm not really wanted here. Oh, this is not really my place. You have to say our to some people so that that it can resonate into their pee brain minds that this is our home. As women, as grown adults, we do not live like this. You need to start dumping the garbage and stop leaving your sanitary pads in there because that is a disgust. You need to stop leaving mountains of dishes in your room because you are attracting flies and maggots and bugs which we do not need in our nice home i appreciate you doing the things you do such as paying the bills on time but mary please you need to realize we both live here and this is our home and i'm feeling very uncomfortable in these living situations put it to her like that what can she say it's either going to be yes or it's either going to be no okay that's what it is and if mary want to get like, rambunctious and yappity yak well then it's always 911. you can call the cops and you can stop the dispute right there don't put your hands on her you do not need to go to jail okay and if she put her hands on you girl call the cops that's another easy way to get her out but let her know what time it is you are grown women grown women do not live like that grown people don't live like that okay i think that is disgusting to go to anybody's house that's filthy with dishes piled up i get it sometimes people go through things they're de they're depressed they may work a lot they may have a lot going on i get it but still there is time in at least seven days one day out of seven days that you can pick up and clean up after yourself and when you're living with a roommate i don't feel like you should be that way that's called disrespect everybody's got to live here so what would i do i told you what i would do I, first of all i would have never invited any type of co-worker to come live with me because you don't know who they really are and for two as far as you having a conversation with her you need to put your big girl panties on. You need to be stern. You need to tell her what time it is because you got to live with her. Don't run away from the situation. Don't pack your shit up and leave and pay extra money to um to move out. I mean, if that's the last resort, of course, do that. But you over there spending nights at your mama's house and shit. But you seeing random chicks running around your, your apartment with nothing but panties on. There's no way on God's green earth would I allow that as a grown up. She's acting ungrown. And so are you, Danisha, because you allowing it. So here's the type of time. Here's the time where you need to put your foot down and let her know what time it is or she can leave. It's either yes or no, period. Stop it inviting people into your houses. I tell y'all this all the time. Y'all be feeling like, oh, because well, I knew him for a few months. He my man. Now he can move it fucking. Oh, I need him for some time at work. So she mommy my roommate now. We cool like that. Y'all be knowing these people. Y'all be having all kind of random people living in your house like it's okay, but it's not. Like, see what I'm saying? Y'all always get the bad end of the stick. Good people always get the bad end of the stick when they invite evil and wicked into their home. Mary knew what type of person she was. That's maybe why she didn't have a good relationship with her last relationship. Okay. And then as for the other good person, what was this, like last week, I think, she invited the guy to come live with her. He felt like he didn't have to pay for nothing because she was invited. He, she invited him. No, nigga, we grown up. She got to pay bills too. Now we... Some of y'all be all over the place. Take time to think about shit. Stop thinking about, oh, I can save money on this or I can save money on that. No, bitch, you can save your life if you just think ahead of the situation. Think before you, you do and offer shit to people. There's no way I would invite anybody that I work with to come live with me. I wouldn't give a fuck if you had nowhere to go because I don't know you like that. You This is work. You work friend. You not friend friend. You work friend. Everybody got a different personality at work. Remember that and believe what I tell y'all. People at work got a different personality. 
that's that's everybody straight up it's a fact now i gotta go so i have one more thought that just processed my mind as i was driving here to pick up my grandkids from school um denisha you should be very grateful that this married person that you invited into your home as a roommate was no deranged crazy person because like i just told you guys there's a show called fear thy roommate fear thy neighbor but more so fear thy roommate. And you, you've invited somebody into your home that you really don't know. Like I said, she has her work personality there. Everybody has a work personality. I'm not the only one. She's not the only one. You are, you, you're guilty of it. Everybody's guilty of it. It's what we do. It's just common sense. It's just like a part of life. You know what I'm saying? It's a step in. You know, it's just a part of life. When we go to work, we act like, you know, we got some common sense. We got some good upbringing. We got some respect for those. We're trying to keep our job. And so... When you invited this woman into your home, did you ever stop and think about any of those things? Like, oh, she could be crazy. She could be lying about the situation that she came from. Like, she's talking about, oh, well, um, she had a verbally abusive um, ex and not clean ex. Is that what she said? Yeah, it could have been her. Every listen, There's one thing about people. You don't really know a person that well, especially when you work around them. Shit, you might not even know your husband that well because they do shit behind your back. But you should be very grateful. Thank God that this woman didn't try to do anything to you or any of these random women that she had walking around y'all place, y'all dwelling. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to have a roommate, but then to wake up to another stranger that you don't even know that's walking around your place naked. That's just like so disrespectful. But you should be very grateful that this woman didn't try to do any type of bodily harm to you. You never know what a person is real intentions are. And I'm sorry, but like some people may feel like I'm wrong for not wanting to invite a co-worker into my home. But I'm going to just stand on business. I'm standing on what I say. There are different personalities that each person has. And going to work and going to the club and going home or family functions, they're all different personalities. You do not bring that same ratchet behavior, that ratchetness to work. That's one thing you don't do. You're a totally different person. That's like a woman going out to the club and then on Sunday she's going to church. She's not going to bring that same ratchet behavior from the club to church. She's not going to do that. I would hope to God she wouldn't do that. So everybody has different personalities. We know when and where to turn them on and off, okay? So yes, this is what Mary has been doing. Of course she's not going to be at work with random hoes. Of course she's not going to be at work being dirty. Of course she's not, because this is work, okay? So now she's home, she's comfortable, she's in her own dwelling. Yeah, of course she's going to bring random hoes. Of course she's going to be who Mary really is. And you didn't really get to know her as a person. You didn't hang out with her, you didn't spend time with her. And maybe you did, I don't know, because you said you got close but being close at work doesn't mean that you close in general you know what i'm saying now this is where i'm trying to get you to understand that be grateful that this woman didn't do any bodily harm to you anything malicious to you in the time that y'all been living together now maybe it is a good idea for you to pack up your stuff and end your lease early because maybe if you was to step with her or step to her about her actions then it might get a little bit out of hand but the one mistake that you started off with was inviting a work stranger a work friend a work friend because she's still a stranger but you invited a work friend to live with you that was the number one thing that you did wrong and then the second one is you didn't speak up about anything you allowed everything to go so if you don't say nothing to nobody what do you expect them to do they're just going to continue doing what they're doing because you're allowing this you know what i'm saying shit if you wanted to pick up my my stuff i would allow you to too as long as you're allowing this i'm gonna allow it you know what i'm saying people will do what you allow them to do and so this is partially your fault too so i feel like you need to put your foot down be cautious about it because you don't know this bitch might be really crazy you don't really know she's bringing home randoms that doesn't mean that she's crazy but it just seems like she doesn't have any self-awareness okay so just just wanted to make sure that you guys realized and understood that but i hope y'all have like a really great day thank you for staying tuned to this real talk you know it's real talk diva time and i'm here picking up the grandkids you know that's my job that i do i bring them to school and i and i pick them up so that way their parents don't have to worry about getting them from school while they at work or they they at home sleeping because you know my daughter tati works at night so she does get tato ready in the morning for me and then i bring her to daycare and I bring Tiki to school and I do the same thing for my other grandkid. You know, I bring them to school too. So that way their mother, she's at work. They can go ahead and work. And my son, he works at nights too. So he's at home sleeping. So, you know what I'm saying? That's what I do. You know what I'm saying? I'm the I'm the matriarch of the family. I'm the one who keep it together. And I'm and I love the responsibility. Trust me when I tell you guys I love the responsibility. But um my grandkids, I'm gonna tell you this story real quick and I'm gonna let y'all go. But my grandkids, they was kind of upset with me when I got the job that I left because Tati was taking them and she was fine with that. You know, she would take them and she would go right go home and go right to sleep. 
But they was like, how are we going to get our donuts in the morning? How are we going to do this? Because every morning we get Dunkin' Donuts. You know, they get a donut each. And I have my iced coffee. And I guess, and I also have hard candy to give them when they leave out the car. So, you know, just so in case their mouths get dry, they got some car candy throughout the day. They might have an itchy throat. They got some hard candy, you know. So I get a big bag of Jolly Ranchers and I give them each three in their hands. You know, we pound it and I drop the candy in their hand. That's how we do every morning. So, you know, they were kind of upset with me when they, they found out that I was getting a job and I wasn't going to be there to pick them, to drop them off and pick them up. And I was kind of upset about it, too, because I just try to build memories with my grandkids because, you know, I'm not going to be here forever on this earth. Nobody is. And so when I do things with them every Friday, we have ice cream, you know, and they've had good behavior in school. I take them for ice cream after school. And so I do these things because I want to build memories with them. And when I'm no longer here, at least they can sit with one another and talk about my mom. Like, you know, hey, remember when my mom used to take us getting ice cream? Remember when she used to give us a Jolly Red, she's a strawberry candy, shit like that, you know? And and I appreciate those moments that I spend with them. Even if it's for like 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes after school, I appreciate that because it allows me just to be a good grandmother and to build memories with them. And so I say this to you guys because some people might feel like, well, why are you getting a grandkids? Why are you doing this? Because I've heard that before. And I'll just be like, bitch, why are you worried about it? I've said that too. You know what I'm saying? Some of my so-called friends, you know, they have said, why are you always getting the kids? Why are you always getting the kids? Or I'll be like, I got to go. I can't talk right now. My grandkids are in this, the car. I feel like when they get in the car, it's not my time to talk with you on the phone no more. It's my time to give them attention because I want to know how their day is. You know what I'm saying? So I've heard complaints from some of my so-called ex-friends like, oh, well, why are you always getting your grandkids? Why why you can't talk? Like, you wouldn't know about being a grandmother because you ain't one. So why are you asking me questions? You know, sometimes I just dust it off like it ain't really no big deal but then I have to explain to you and if I have to constantly explain to you stop calling my phone at a certain time because I want my grandkids Monday through Friday at this time then you should respect that but some people don't respect that but I just like to build memories with my grandkids and my family in general you know what I'm saying so that's what I do but I hope y'all have a little, really great day. My grandkids are about to get out of school right now in one minute. And so I got to greet them. So I love you all. Stay deep and deep delicious. Let Danisha know what you would do. Danisha, be careful. I love you all. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.